Indeed, and obviously GTA 5 being the only game being sold on three separate generations of consoles, and most people don't play it to run around murdering and stealing things, they role play in the world now. It kind of tells you that gaming is, it's weird, it's a medium that is it's kind of embraced by the internet culture to a large degree because of how much content it can generate, and it can generate monetizably. But um, the fact that you can... Um, you can kind of take gaming and make it whatever you want it to be. Whereas with movies and television and even music, there's there's only so much interpretation and directions you can go in, which is why I think gaming is such a fertile ground for, for content creation, albeit one that you do have to invest a lot of time and energy in. But uh, adieu. Um, sorry, alas, I have, a, I have another silly question. It's all the same to you. Um, you once wrote in a recent Athletic article be sure to subscribe to The Athletic. There's probably some kind of deal going on right now, I'm sure, because it's like DFS. If you don't buy it when there's not a deal, you're a goddamn idiot. But nevertheless, uh, you once wrote that Sun Tzu would, be bl would have bloody loved poker. Are there any more historical figures that you would have liked to have introduced to games outside of their times? Monopoly to Rockefeller or Cluedo to Caesar, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it was funny, when I was setting up Muddy Knees Media, I was I was reading uh, God, what's his name? Uh, it's a Napoleon book by Andrew Roberts, uh, who's also written. I mean, he's written about a lot of historical figures. Now, I, I went to comprehensive school in Essex. We didn't have the the most robust history syllabus, so I knew absolutely nothing about Napoleon, um, nothing whatsoever. Uh, so I was reading this book, and at the time when you know we were breaking away from the Guardian and setting up Muddy Knees Media, I was very much on the bits when Napoleon wins all of the battles through audacity and uh, and uh, ruthlessness. And it was only later, when the company had started and the fear had kicked in, that I started reading the second half of the book. And uh, things did not go well. And then the the very strong message running through the book was that Napoleon had bitten off rather more than he could chew in so much as he invaded Russia, and uh, it, it did not end happily. So that, that caused a, a bit of a crisis of confidence. But yeah, I, I would like to play uh, some sort of strategic game with, with the likes of Napoleon. A strategic... Wow! So you would... Not only would you have the audacity to walk up to Mr. Napoleon, sir, you got time for a game. What is this? Well, we're going to play... Well, what would you play with him then? What would you... You're Okay, you've got this incredibly unique opportunity. Presumably... We'll establish the rules of time travel later, or you're bringing him here. Either way, you, you've got Napoleon. What game are you playing with him? I'll probably, I'll probably introduce him to uh, Europa Universalis, which is the paradox game. It's a very complicated grand strategy game that starts in 1444 and goes to, oddly enough, uh, the 18, 1821, I think. So just about the point where Napoleon's going to pop his clogs. And it's all about politics and trading and state building and, and war as well. So I think we'd spend an afternoon learning the basic mechanics. Uh, at that point, I think he'd probably teach me how to play it properly. <laughs>